Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Tracy. And as you probably already know, if you're watching this, I pretty much live for lessons that help our students with critical thinking and creativity. And that's why I'm obsessed with STEM challenges. This week, we're going over four new Halloween STEM challenges, one every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. I have to skip Thursday. Um, we're going to do a quick intro for each day, and then we're going to dive right into the challenge of the day. So today's challenge is pirate ships, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, but I want to remind you that for the first week through October 25th, these challenges are actually a free gift to my subscribers. So if you are not subscribed and you want to join up and it's before October 25th or on that day, you can use that first bit.ly link. So you'll just type into your, um, into whatever web browser you're using bit.ly slash for Halloween STEM, make sure it's all lowercase. If you are watching this after the fact, you might be feeling very sad and I'm sorry, I hate that feeling so much you will want to use the second link that says KT email in all capital letters. Make sure that you sign up so that you don't miss out when I do stuff like this because I always send out an email and let you know. So I'm gonna leave that up for a few minutes just so you can get that down if you want it or you need it. And um, let's go ahead and we're gonna dive right in. So with pirate ships today, we are gonna go through a quick walk through the challenge. I'm gonna talk a lot about different materials you can use because especially in this year, a lot of our students are doing virtual learning at home or they're in the classroom where you're doing some hybrid and so materials can't be shared and it can be sort of tricky. So I have lots of ideas for that. And a few different things you can do to make the challenge a little bit different, maybe a little bit more difficult if you have older students or students who are more experienced with STEM challenges. Um, and then I'll take you through a couple of the sheets on the actual challenge itself so that you can um, take a look. And if you have any questions or comments along the way, then go ahead and put those in the comment fields, whether you're watching live or not, and I will answer that. And Carrie just wrote, I should actually bring her in so you know it's not me saying it. Um, Carrie just wrote, Our perfect for international talk like a pirate day in September. So I missed September for this year, but you can have it for next year and it'll be right there on time for you, right? Okay, so let's take a look really quickly. The criterion constraints list. Now these printables are what comes with what you see in the bit.ly link with the resource. And then they're also in Google Slides, which we'll look at it a little bit so that you can tailor them, edit them, and also assign them out to your virtual students. So I kept the criterion constraints list so super simple on this. Um, I have design a boat that floats and fits as much gold as possible. And I might want to change that word to treasure, depending on materials adjustments we make in just a moment, but I'm leaving it for gold. It, it will be gold when you download it, but you can change it. Um, and then I put the boat must have a sail. I'll tell you why in a moment. You can take that out if you don't want it. If you want this to be a super simple challenge, I would leave the sail off um, and just have a boat. And we'll talk about that when we go over the materials a little bit more. But putting a sail on it gives you two extra options to make things a little bit more interesting. So I left it. And for constraints, I just have use only teacher approved or parent approved materials. Um, because just because a kid has the material at home doesn't mean that their parents want them to use it on a challenge, especially if it might get damaged. And we know when anytime we're working with water, that's a possibility. So we have to be careful, right? And then as I pointed out yesterday when we talked about it, I have four handouts. These are design analysis and recording and reflecting. And you want to make sure that you don't skip those. Very, very important. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen as I go through some of the materials list that we have as suggestions. And then I have a whole bucket of uh, other ideas here that I want to go through with you too. So let me add, my, add in my screen right here. So this is what you will see when you go into the Google Slides. And as I mentioned, you can go in and edit anything you want. Sometimes I find with editing within Google Slides that tables in particular are a little bit wonky and hard for, hard for me to do. So if you are like that too, and you decide, you know what, I really want to add another one, and you're having trouble with either merging cells or splitting them out, another option is just to delete it and start a whole new table or actually go and download it as a PowerPoint file and then edit there. Sometimes I do that because I just get frustrated. Otherwise, it could be a little bit easier to um, edit in PowerPoint. As a reminder, pointed this out in yesterday's um, session as well, but there are little margin notes on some of these slides for if it's in the teacher and parent section for you and if it's in the student section for them. Um, there are some extras here for boat challenges 
that you might want to look into because I made some student facing videos for a boat challenge last year on my simple stem uh, from home uh, YouTube channel. And there are some extra Google slides kind of activities and like choice boards and menu boards and Google forms and some little add ons that you might want if you want to add to this challenge. You don't have to. You can keep it simple if you want. But I just wanted you to notice that it's there. OK, um, I have some quick tips for you or for the parents especially around making sure that we actually challenge our students and we don't get too worried if it is challenging because um, it is the point of a STEM challenge, right? And so some little tips here for you or for them just to help you remember what, what the goal is and what the objectives are so that you don't accidentally undermine them because it can be shockingly easy to do. Okay, on to materials. So the recommendation is a foil sheet. I like building boats with foil sheets, but you can also do it with just about anything other good alternatives are clay, plastic bags, wax paper, et cetera. Um, some gold, and we're going to talk a lot about gold um, substitutions, especially today. So gold coins, if you have them, are great. Those gold, anything that's kind of a gold candy, base 10 blocks, a single lemon, anything that's yellow, basically. They're going to need a container with water to test the seaworthiness of the ship. Now, if they're at home, they could probably just plug up their sink with parent permission um, or use a bathtub with parent permission, always, always, always parent permission, right? Um, or they can just use, often they'll have something like a bowl, a cooking bowl maybe that they're allowed to use or some sort of Tupperware container. Uh, you're gonna need, it's helpful to have some tape. You don't really need it strictly, especially if you're using either clay or foil. Uh, you don't really need tape necessarily, but it's it's definitely helpful to have a little bit, especially if you're gonna require the sale, which we'll talk about more in a moment. Uh, some craft sticks, some cotton swabs, and just like yesterday, clean trash like toilet paper, tubes are really helpful, scrap paper, cardboard scraps, and water bottle lids. So let me come back on screen for a moment and let's talk about some substitutions for gold. First thing I want to point out is gold candies or like brassy kind of color candies like Rolos or this is like a caramel lovers pack that I saw when I was Halloween candy shopping the other day which I would love to say was for the kids, but it's really for me because I'm eating way too much candy this month. That's neither here nor there, um, but that can be really good. And also, by the way, that could be used for the pumpkin pedestals challenge we talked about yesterday too. You could use the same thing for pumpkins and for the gold. Um, so I have some other gold ideas here. First of all, if you're social distancing and the kids aren't allowed to share materials, when they're testing their boats, um, you could have them dropping in materials with these like little tongs. So what I've used for the gold in this boat, I actually have a combination of things. These are those gold chocolate candies that I have. And these actually, I got last St. Patrick's Day at Dollar Tree. I swear to you, it, they should pay me to sponsor them <laughs> because I'm always talking about Dollar Tree stuff. Um, another option we talked about yesterday, plastic eggs, that could be really good. I mentioned this in the materials list, but like a single lemon, can you imagine this would make this challenge a lot different, especially balance wise to use something that's one solid thing that's kind of heavy. Obviously, what we want our kids to look for and we want them to use is something that's not going to get damaged if it gets wet because they're probably going to sink this boat. Most of the time we do a straight capacity, like how much can you fit in before it sinks kind of a challenge or before you run out of room, because especially if we end up using a lighter material, they might be able to fill the boat entirely. It might not have sunk yet, but they might not be able to get anything else into the boat. And we'll do that when we talk about reflection in a minute. Let me keep going over my gold. Um, popcorn kernels, just scratch paper. I just had some like little yellow. It doesn't have to be yellow, but you know, obviously it's kind of fun if you, if you want it to be like pirate's treasure or pirate's gold, if it matches. But I just had like a little scrap paper and I did that. Another thing you might think about doing if you have these, this is another Dollar Tree thing. I went and bought, gosh, it was like a pack of like 12 of these for a dollar, um, but things like these filled with some kind of treasure. So this could be like a treasure chest and what they put in it, that could vary. But I had sequins in this one. I had little pasta in this one. Pasta is maybe another option that you could do. Beads water bottle lids that just have a money symbol on them. And then I had another idea today that I think could be really great for getting to know your kids. What if you changed it from gold to just treasure? And you could ask them to like look around and find some sort of small treasure and share it with everybody. 
um, what that is. Now, I like to always give an out for those kids who don't like to actually kind of get personal about themselves. But so we'll talk about that in a moment, but um, I'll give you some examples. So if I was choosing a small treasure, this one for me is a small treasure. This actually was made for me my first year that I was teaching. One of my students made this for me for Christmas and it's because, or after Christmas because he got a wood burning set kit as a gift. And he, I remember it was so sweet. He came back after Christmas and he asked me what my favorite colors were. And so I told him and didn't know it was for the sign. Um, and he put the frog on there because he didn't need to ask because I had frogs over the classroom. So he knew that I loved them. So this is a small treasure. Um, I might also choose something like this just because it makes me laugh every time I see it. Just the idea of a bird in a little, <laughs> a little like Christmas scarf and hat just cracks me up. I don't, I'm not really sure why. Um, or maybe something like my little stamps that have my name on it because my name is not super easy to find in these like pre-made bracelets or stamps or things like that. So I consider those like little tiny treasures and I could make a boat that just holds my tiny treasures. An out or a different way of looking at that that I also think would be really fun is to ask your kids, oh, I'm sorry, there's another one that's kind of personal, is you could give them a number of craft sticks um, that they, and that wouldn't be a capacity challenge, it'd just be a boat that floats with their treasures and they could list things that are treasures to them which is then a kind of nice segue into thanksgiving as well so if you don't get to this before um before you get through halloween you could do it afterwards another thing that i thought could be funny is asking your students to collect small things that most people wouldn't think of as treasures and so i i went around the house and i found a couple of things a ketchup packet earplugs, chapstick, or not, is chapstick one of those brands you're not supposed to say? Lip balm, I'll say instead. Uh, and this actually wasn't even that brand anyway. Um, nail polish, I just happen to have a gold color, but it doesn't need to be. Um, I think I have, oh, wet wipes. Certainly a treasure in a pandemic, right? Um, and floss and a binder clip. And I thought this could be like a, a pirate ship of like random tiny treasures. And then afterward, the reason I thought this would could be really fun is afterward trying to create a narrative, a story about why the pirates have collected these treasures. What, like, I have so many questions for these pirates, right? Like, what are they, why do they need these things? Why are they worth braving all the different obstacles that they would, that they needed to, whatever on their journey they needed to go through to get them? Um, what happens when they get them back to wherever it is that they live? I just think it could create some really weird, bizarre storyscapes because it, for me, it all just started with floss, right? Like, why would you, why would you put, exert all that effort to go out and get like floss and like ketchup packets and things like that? So like just even coming up with the reasoning for all of that. So I wrote myself little questions. Who are these pirates? Why is this treasure so treasure so coveted what are the obstacles they have to brave to get it why were they willing to do that um how did they get it like who who did they get it from like what happened what events transpired and then what happened when they got the treasure home so i thought that could be a really fun or funny kind of um story writing exercise if you made the treasure like unusual treasures or you know random treasures or whatever. Okay, let me go back to sharing my screen because there are a couple other things I wanted to share about this challenge. Um, okay, on the student screen, as you remember yesterday, I said there would be little directions in here if I thought it was necessary. So for students at home, let's say that they might not be there with you in synchronous learning time to get you know their questions answered. So for ship capacity, I put that as the measurement goal. And then for them, I said, for capacity, record how much gold your ship held before it sank, include how you are measuring. So in some cases, students might be at home and they might say, oh, well, I, I put, you know, five, you might want to change the word gold too. If you decide to go with treasures, you could just do a replace, a search and replace gold with treasure. So they might just say like, I had five treasures or maybe they weighed them on a, maybe they have a kitchen scale and they weighed them and so they could tell us that 100 go, uh, grams of gold or whatever um and the other questions are pretty standard like i usually ask um, of any of these challenges one thing i wanted to point out about the sale 
I was going to tell you two things about that. One reason to have the sale is because once you add this in, it actually um, can throw off the balance of the boat. So having a sale on it actually makes it a little often a little less seaworthy, especially if they put it up real tall um, or make it really big. They can run into some extra problems they wouldn't run into necessarily if you didn't ask them to have the sale. So that's one reason to have it. You don't necessarily need to use the sale for anything other than just, I want to sail on this boat. Whether or not they choose to decorate it, that's up to them unless you want to add it. If you want them to decorate it, you should put it in the, add it to the criteria and constraints list so they know they have to do that. Um, I know a lot of people often ask me what I use to make the models. And first, I am always really reluctant to tell people about that because I don't want you to show students or tell students um, other examples because it stunts their creativity, actually makes it harder for them to come up with their own ideas because they end up pretty much replicating whatever it is they see. But I will tell you on this one, I used two toilet paper tube rolls. One is on the sale and one is on the bottom. One foil sheet, one, two, three, four, five cotton swabs. And um, little, I just had these little cutouts of, I printed out little cutouts because I wanted to decorate mine. And that's it. Pretty simple, right? So you don't need to give students a lot of materials. And um, like I said, there are student facing videos for boats that are in there on your teacher's notes. On the first day, I actually talk directly to the students and like give them ideas like, hey, look around your house for things that you might be able to use and gave some suggestions of like clean trash kinds of things that most of us have one of them, if not you know, more. So this should be an option. The other reason to have a sale is if you want to add a, um, a measurement test that's not just about capacity, not just how much stuff, how much gold or treasure can you fit on the ship, but if you want it to actually be able to sail, then what you could do is have them use their sail and grab a hairdryer and see if they can make it sail from whatever they're, um, you know, if they're using a sink, if they're using a little tub. I use these little, these little trays. I keep walking the wrong way, guys. This is like one of those little plastic trays that kids turn in papers. I think I got it from Target or Dollar Tree, certainly one of the two. Um, and just like sailing from one end of the container to the next, because sometimes, again, because of their sail, it doesn't take the wind very well. It, it might fall over. The, the sail might fall over. The whole boat might capsize. Um, so it's another fun thing to sort of add in um, to make things a little bit different. So you can have the pirates maybe sailing from, you know, one island to the next back home. Um, there are a lot of different options there. Okay, I think I've covered all of the major things. Let me just check right here. I'm picking up my little tongs here. Let me just check my list to make sure I didn't miss anything that was really important to say. Yeah, so I think this is like, this will be uh, the kind of thing that uh, kids will be able to do pretty easily because it's a pretty classic challenge. So if you know your kids are older, I encourage you to add one of those like extra things to make this boat challenge a little bit different from maybe boat challenges they've done in the past, either with the sail or by changing the kind of treasure that's inside could make it a little bit more personal and a little bit more of a kind of a way to get like to know your, even though it's, I know we're like a month in, two months in, oh my God, time, time has no meaning in 2020. Uh, I know we're a couple months in already into the school year, but um, especially if you're in a hybrid situation, it can be difficult to build the rapport and build the community and, and know your kids very well. So this might be another opportunity where they can share something about themselves by even if they just choose one, choose one tiny treasure, one small treasure. And if you're trying to get kids at home, because small is relative, right? You can either give them dimensions or you could just say, I would even just do something like really simple, like it should be small enough that it fits into the palm of your hand. So in this case, this little, this little thing would be perfect. Um, and then you could have them, like I said, make a treasure. They could be like a treasure chest where they have a collection of treasures or just put them in loose into the boat or into the ship. Um, or they could just be one. Like this is kind of a large, this one wouldn't fit into the palm of my hand, but it is pretty lightweight. It's I actually think the plate feels heavier um, to me than this does. So size wise, this might be more tricky. Weight wise, this might be more tricky. So you have lots of different little options there. I will stop. I know I keep going on and on because I just love um, all the variety and all the different ways you can make these challenges your own and use them to help to get to know your kids a little bit better. 
I don't see any new questions. So if I do see them later, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and just one more time in case you missed it. Oh, it's been up the whole time. <laughs> the banner on the bottom is where you can grab, if it's before October 25th, free printables and Google Slides versions of all these four challenges. And if it's after the 25th, make sure you get onto the email list so that you don't miss the next time I do something like this, because I'm always trying to find ways to um, say thank you to my subscribers for letting me into your inbox, because I know it's a it's a privilege and I know that it's very busy in there, right? Um, okay, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to be talking about the eyeball dish, and I'm looking forward to that. Bye for now.